one in five Alabama folks facing this situation of termites. I can't wow. believe that. That's I, a really high number. That is a high number. I guess Tom's going to verify yes. it for us. Well, let, let's turn to our guest tonight, uh, Tom Campbell. Uh, we know him as Termite Tom is here. So tell us, Tom, before we get into things, one in five Alabama folks, does that sound about right to you? Uh, it sounds very low to me. Oh, wow. Uh, most people don't find termite damage on termite inspection, so the number of people who have termite damage in their houses, wow. unfortunately, is way higher than that. Oh my God. Wow, okay, well, there you have it. Well, if you will, you've been here before, we love to have you on the show. Thank you for being here. I'm if happy, you will, introduce yourself to our guests. I'm happy to be here. I'm Tom Campbell, uh, and our firm, believe it or not, with eight lawyers, all we do is handle termite damage claims. So. If you've got a question about termite bonds or termites or what to do if you get a termite damage claim, we're here to answer them. I got a question. Come on, I got to start. Can I start? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So, all right. Uh, a termite, all right, you represent folks who uh, unfortunately discover that they have termite damage way past the time when they should have already discovered that, right? I mean, most of the time, although termites are very hard to detect, when they're doing a termite inspection, they're looking for tiny pieces of mud where it shouldn't be and ripples in paint and things like that. Uh, they're social insects, they live in the ground, mm -hmm. so everybody thinks if I have a termite infestation, it's gonna be like an ant infestation and I'll know it. Most of the time you don't. Mm -hmm. That's why when your bug man comes and spends 10 or 15 minutes doing a termite inspection, they're not doing a proper inspection. They need to be there for about an hour inspecting your house, going and sounding on every window sill and door jam oh, and wow. baseboard in your house looking for sounds of hollow wood because the wood's gonna get hollow before you ever see a termite or probably before you see any termite tunnels. So you always think about, or I've always thought about termite damage being in the subflooring, like usually on the, the main level and below. Is that the case? Is that where you find most of it? Or can it be up in the upper levels of your house? Uh, if you have a crawl space house, you can crawl under it and the substructure is available to inspect. That's yeah. usually where they find termite damage. Mm -hmm. I've got more bad news for you though. There's a super termite that has been <laughs> infesting the Gulf Coast uh, for about the last 15 years, calling, causing utter devastation. Wow. We now have them in Birmingham. Oof. Uh, the Cahaba River Valley has become uh -huh. a hot spot for Formosan termites. So if you live south of town and you have termites, you're probably looking at the difference between a termite damage claim of fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! We've seen them here in Birmingham now, where the amount of damage is eight hundred thousand, a million dollars oh in termite damage to some fairly new houses. Now, is my homeowner going to cover that? Uh, unfortunately not, which is why you do need to have a termite bond. Uh, the reason so many people have termite damage is the termite companies usually don't do the termite treatment correctly mm -hmm. and then they let that wear off or they sell you a bogus bu uh, baiting system. But you need to have one because even if you uh, get termites and you have to file a claim to get the damage repaired, mm -hmm. you need to have a company that was responsible for preventing them. Can you describe to our uh, to our jurors? I, think <laughs> I love and it. True lawyer. Too much. Right. I love it. Uh, can you describe to our viewers uh, what a termite bond is? What does that mean mm -hmm. just in mm -hmm. lay terms? Mm -hmm. uh, what it is is it's really just a service contract and the bond part of it is just a guarantee that if the treatment we provide does not work to prevent termites, then here's what we're gonna pay. Mm -hmm. And uh, that presents a big problem for homeowners because when you get termite damage, you need to have somebody other than the company that probably caused it tell you whether or not how bad it is and whether it's covered under the contract because a lot of termite contracts are two basic types of warranties. One says all we'll do is retreat. The mm -hmm. other one says we will pay to repair termite damage we may have caused. Uh, I can honestly not think of a case where we failed to get a recovery even if somebody wow. had a retreatment only contract because every time we look, 
they didn't do the termite treatment correctly. Mm -hmm. So you can take the termite contract and just do that to it because wow. if they didn't provide the service, then the limit on the warranty for that service is not worth the paper that it's written on and you can get tort damages. But you don't want to, but you still need to have a bond in place though, right? You really need to have a bond because you need to get have somebody to sue if they don't pay your termite <laughs> okay. damage claim, to okay. be honest with you. But you're saying you also, if you have termite damage, you recommend getting a third a party that is not involved to come and inspect it and really give you a, a different estimate. If they prescribe the right termite treatment and they actually provided it and they reapplied it when it wore off, mm -hmm. that termite prevention treatment works. Okay. And to get those chemicals on the market, they had to prove to the EPA they work 100% of the wow. time. Okay. So the end of that is that if you have termite damage, it's probably because they either prescribed the wrong system or they didn't do the treatment or they let it wear off. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they should be responsible for paying for the damage. 